Hi Scorpios, happy birthday. Welcome to your November 2017 reading. And let's get right into it. So let's see what's going on for Scorpios. Um, I know we have the full moon in Taurus in on November 4th. And I believe November 18th, let me double check. Yeah, November 18th is going to be the new moon in Scorpio. Okay. So right off the bat, we have... Wheel of Fortune. So I'm hoping that that new Jupiter energy is really sort of okay. Um, hmm. We lighting up a little bit? Is there like, is there some celebration going on? Is there some fun happening? I see a love offer. I see a love offer through friendship. I see a love offer through sort of coming together. And there's a lot of creative energy behind that. Um, behind you coming together with this person, like you and this person sort of coming together, um, leads to new creative beginnings. You have the queen of pentacles here. So there's potentially, you know, and it's underneath the wheel of fortune. Let's just show you the cards down here. Um, it's underneath the wheel of fortune. So definitely, um, potentially a change in, career, a change in opportunities for making money. So I, I feel that a lot of you are beginning to feel, yo, I feel like are beginning to embrace the, your Taurus side, right? Taurus being your opposing sign, um, that there is some embracing of that side of your archetype, that opposing side of your archetype, where there is more sort of awareness and more connection to, um, the material realm, what you possess, what you have, your material belongings, and actually finding value in those things, right? Um, yeah, so just kind of allowing yourself to see value in what it is that you do have instead of trying to do, kind of destroy what it is that you do have. I see some of you might be a little bit nervous about this offer coming through, um, or this person here, this person, this page of cups, this water sign, this cancer, other another, another Scorpio or Pisces, um, feels a little intimidated about having, about, you know, kind of confronting you, right? Feels a little bit sort of like, I don't know, like, are they gonna, what's, are they gonna, you know, come, are they gonna come through? Are they gonna pull through and sort of accept my offer? Um, so there's, yeah, okay, Queen of Swords and Temperance. Okay. So, you know, on the bottom of the deck, we have the Strength card. Okay, so Wheel of Fortune, Page of Cups. So I'm definitely, and, and with this with this Queen of Pentacles here, I'm definitely sort of feeling as though there's some, there's a change in luck. And I, I mean, Jupiter is now in your sign. Jupiter's in your first house. So whatever you sort of want or ask for, you're going to get it. Um, whatever it is that you want to achieve, you're going to succeed. It's going to happen, right? Um and that things may sort of happen slowly, but that they're, they're definitely, the wheel is turning. The wheel is turning. Things are moving forward for you. So let's kind of get into the different messages that I'm picking up through these cards. So one is definitely a love offer, right? We have this page of cups here, like I said before, a water sign, a Scorpio, Cancer, or a Pisces. And I feel that this is somebody that you're meeting among friends or that, you know, you're kind of being introduced to through friends. Um... Or that there's a kind of this renewal of innocence among you and your group of friends that, you know, there was, there's a group of friends and there is a sort of, you know, renewed spark of, of emotional, of, of emotional investment, emotional connection between you and a group of friends. Um, and that with this group comes, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of creativity happening around you, right? Jupiter again is in your first sign. So whatever you ask for, whatever you want is going to come through, um, whatever you, whatever you are, uh, whatever you desire, right. Can kind of come to manifest, come to fruition. Um, for some of you, this new love interest could be an air sign, an Aquarius, Libra, or a Gemini. Um, uh, this is somebody who's on top of their game. This is somebody who definitely knows what they're doing, knows what they're talking about, Sorry, I don't mind my phone. Um, I'm also kind of at work. 
I'm in, a, in a, I'm in a gallery space, so I may have to stop the video if, you know, I need to handle some business. But nonetheless, it's pretty quiet right now. Hmm. We'll get clarification for this Queen of Swords because I'm not really, I feel she's kind of disjointed at the same time. Like, I feel that she's here, but she's not here. Like, I feel this could potentially be somebody who's part of your group of friends, who's part of your circle, but isn't really participating. <clears throat> And I feel that you may be trying to get them to kind of participate or be, or kind of, you know, be with you and this group. Let's get a clarifier. Can I get clarification for the Queen of Swords, please? Clarification. Um, yeah, I sort of see somebody here, right? We have the Nine of Pentacles and the King of Wands. And I've mentioned this before, but whenever the King of Wands sort of comes up for me, um, I read it as, you know, a situation where this king, you know, is a bit, in, is a bit impatient, is a bit hasty. Yes, is a king nonetheless, um, but, you know, is the king of fire, right? Is the king of the suit of wands. Fire is very impatient. It can be, it can burn hot. And, and it can burn hot and burn fast, right? It's very demanding. It demands a lot of attention. Um, it sucks all the oxygen up right in the room. So, you know, when this King of Wands comes up for me, it sort of represents an energy or a kind of energy, like a, a person that's carrying energy or a general energy that's sort of manifesting itself around you where there is this sort of um, impatience or hastiness or kind of this desire to kind of want to push someone, wanting to push someone, wanting to push another human being towards sort of bending towards your will. Like this king wants people to bend towards his will, right? Think of, when we think of a Leo who is not operating at their highest, right? Or is, or is operating kind of in their lowest of vibrations, right? We think of a very pushy, egotistical human being who pushes people to their will. And so that's kind of what this King of Wands can do. Um, is a great manifester, but also kind of has to push through to make things happen, right? And I see with this Nine of Pentacles here, this is somebody who is incredibly independent. And I feel that this Nine of Pentacles is describing this King of, this Queen of Swords. This Queen of Swords is somebody who's very independent. And I feel this is, a, this is another person, this is an air sign. This is an Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra. They have, their, they have a lot of ideas, right? And they're represented by the Queen. So while they definitely have a mastery of the suit of air, um, they're not like the King where the King is 100% is has become kind of cold hearted um, and is very sort of, oh, one second. Sorry about that, I had to handle business. Um, so yeah, this Queen of Swords, I feel is a separate en energy that you're sort of dealing with. And as I was saying that while she is, while yes, suit of air, very intellectual, um, uh, very, a lot of mental activity, great mental activity, there's still this kind of benevolence about her and this fairness about her, right? Being the card that represents Libra, um, there's, so it could be very well be a Libra, right? Um, and Libra's, you know, very beautiful, right? Ruled by Venus, you know, a, one of the, one of, what a sign of beauty, right? Um, charm. And there's this elegance about the Libra, um, especially a Libra woman, right? There's this charm and this elegance that Gemini's and Aquarians just don't, we, we have, but we, we just, we have it in a different kind of quirky, non-conventional way, Whereas a Libra is very charming in this sort of very classic sense. Um, and so, you know, if this is a Libra, this is definitely somebody who, you know, feels very independent and, and in a sense can feel kind of detached. Um, and also, like, is kind of okay on their own. Well, isn't kind of. This is a Nine of Pentacles. This person's very independent. This person feels very abundant with where they're at right now. Um, and when this card comes up in reference to describing a love interest or a romantic interest that, you know, it definitely denotes somebody who, you know, actually feels pretty secure in where they're at. So they're not going to go out of their way to sort of chase um, a lover or a love interest because they're like, you can either come and join me or not. I'm chilling with or without you. Right. I'm chilling with or without you. So I definitely feel that this queen of swords, this air sign, this air energy is yeah, kind of a little bit detached. Right. Um, in a, you know, very stereotypical sense, 
but is you know is that way because they feel very secure in themselves and I feel that this king of wands energy represents not just your energy but energy that they're kind of receiving from a lot of people where there's this eagerness or this anxiousness to sort of break down their walls this king of wands wants to break down your walls um wants to kind of get in and and wants to, wants to conquer, right? Wants to, fire signs are also, think of Aries, right? Wants to conquer. Um, so I'm definitely feeling that this queen of swords is somebody that there, there, there could potentially be, right? Like there's somebody that you've met among, amongst a group of friends. There's a lot of creative activity. Like there's a spark. There's definitely a spark with this ace of wands. This, this, this ace of wands to me represents a spark, represents a new beginning, represents creative new beginnings, passionate new beginnings, but it doesn't necessarily mean that there that there's like longevity, right? In that ace of the ace of the the, the wands are very it's a very quick, very fast sort of hit it and quit it kind of energy. So just be mindful of that with this air energy, right? That and this could also represent you, right? It could it could it, any reading that I do for an for you know a general reading can go both ways. So this Queen of Swords can also represent you feeling incredibly independent, um, feeling like, you know, there's there's a lot working out for you financially. Whatever you're kind of asking for is kind of falling into your lap because we have Jupiter in your first house, right? So it could also represent you feeling incredibly independent and people are kind of pulling at you and people are sort of, you know, there's a, there's a lot of opportunities that you're being kind of, that are being dropped into your lap. Because when Jupiter's in the first house, you know, you're always at the right place at the right time. Always. Like you're never, like you're always at, you always seem to be right where an opportunity is going to like literally hand itself off to you. Um, this Queen of Pentacles here. Like I said before, I feel does represent you. I feel like this this does represent you. And this page of cups also can represent sort of an aspect of yourself that sometimes I feel that Scorpios, um, you know, when we think of when we think of, you know, different suits, right? And how the suits kind of develop. When we look at the air suit, we have Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. And we kind of go from this, um, we kind of go from this very innocent. Gemini, childlike, you know, completely total open, open gate, open portal kind of energy to this Aquarian energy that then kind of, I don't want to say hardens, but you know, it, it definitely, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a little bit more of a seriousness to the Aquarian energy versus a Gemini energy. When you, when you look at the suit of the, the water, right? Water suit, um, the, the elements of water, it's kind of backwards where you start out with cancer, which is the crab, right? Which is this kind of hardened, you know, there's a lot going on underneath the surface, but it's kind of hard on the outside. Then we get to Scorpio, which is still, in my opinion, like a very, can be a very serious and very deep and, 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 and a sign that has a lot of depth to it. Then we get to Pisces, which kind of is the more, the, the innocent, right? Open conduit kind of, kind of energy, right? So it, it goes backwards. And I feel like with this page of cups, there's kind of like, and this three of cups too, there's like this return. Turn. And with this wheel of fortune, there's a kind of this return to like a more lighthearted sense of who you are. There's there you have the ability to sort of offer up your cup or offer up whatever love it is that you have in a very sort of endearing and innocent way, much like how a Pisces can do, right? Like a Pisces can kind of charm people. Um, one second. Okay, I'm sorry again. <laughs> um so yeah, there's sort of this return to like this sort of lighthearted, you're, you feel like you can offer up, there's like a part of you that you're like, wow, I haven't felt like this in a long time. I haven't felt, I haven't felt sort of like this childish, you know, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't felt this kind of innocence, right? Or this, this, everything is so serious in the Scorpio, um, in the Scorpio outlook and, and take on things. Things can be, and I get it because I'm an Aquarius, so things can get really serious and things can get very, you know, this is, this is how they need to be. This is, you know, what, what's, what are you doing? And, and it, we, we can enter into a very critical mind space when we're in that seriousness. And I feel there's a lightheartedness that's kind of coming about, and it's allowing you to really feel, um, more in touch with your with your actual physical reality. I feel that a lot of you are actually getting more in touch with like, well, what's happening? What's happening with me in this physical world right now, right? Especially as we get into the full moon in Taurus, 
which, you know, full moons are all about culminations, things ending, things coming, you know, things coming to a climax and Taurus being that sign that has to do with our material possessions, our relationship to our physical selves, right? How we value our physical selves, how we value our material possessions, our values and our morals. Um, are we possessive about the things that we have? Um, and, and like, how do we hold on to things, right? Whereas you're all about how do I destroy and let go of as many things as possible, but you know, you, f but you get to actually really feel connected to yourself. I feel that a lot of you are feeling really connected and really in touch with your physical bodies. Very sensual, right? Like I'm definitely feeling like y'all are feeling real, especially when we have the sign of pentacles here. And it's kind of like a self-sustaining sensuality where you're not really even needing a partner. Like you're not even really needing um, like the serious, these serious emotional romantic connections. Like you're okay actually kind of exploring this by yourself, right? And that you're okay actually standing alone and standing on your own for, you know, not that you can't, you're very independent, right? I mean, you know, all signs have their, have their streaks of independence, right? But it's like Scorpios actually of the water signs to me feel like one of the more independent, you know, signs of the, of the water tribe. Um, but I definitely feel that you all are kind of like, ooh, like I feel really good about myself. Like my physical body feels beautiful. Like, um, you know, I feel very sexy. Like I feel, I feel, I feel that happening with a lot of you. And you know, it's uncomfortable, right? It's not, you know, I feel that, you know, it's not, it's not a, it's not normal. It's not, you know, an, a go-to sort of feeling, right, that y'all have um, within yourselves to really feel good about your, you know, your, your body in that sense. Like kind of have a, kind of how a Taurus feels good about themselves, right? Taurus is always feeling themselves. It's like, yeah, they're ruled by Venus. Duh. Like, <laughs> of course. So, you know, and we have this nine of wands here, which to me does represent some apprehension and it's underneath this page of cups. So I do feel that if there is some kind of love offer, right? Cause this page also still represents a love offer, you know, that may have to do with this queen of swords or another water sign, right? A, a, a water sign who's very playful, who's very innocent. It's the beginning of something that can be really beautiful. Um, and there's, there's a foundation of friendship there, right? There's some kind of foundation between you and this person of, of friendship. Um, I'm very interested to see how these, you know, these relationships here, but uh, the nine of wands and underneath this page of cups to me definitely refers to sort of nervousness surrounding romance, nervousness surrounding next to the queen of pentacles, nervousness surrounding really valuing yourself, like almost as if some of you, while you want to be here in this queen of pentacles energy, really feeling yourselves and really feeling good about yourselves, there still is kind of like this outer witness like this outer, this outer part of you who's witnessing you and is shaming you at the same time of like, what are you doing? Like, we, like, we have work to do. We have transformational, deep psychological, psychic work to do. What are you doing? But it's like, I want to kick it in the, I want to kick it in this realm and, and really, cause like, you know, it, it, it's actually really important that we feel grounded in this world. Like, yes, spiritual work is very important. Yes, you know, Venturing into the other realm is very important, but we also need to feel very grounded in what's real. Like we're here in these human bodies for a reason, to experience, we have physical experiences for a reason. They're valid, They're, they exist for a reason. Um, and I feel that some of you will definitely overcome, right? Like we'll be able to kind of squash that outer, I really do feel that this kind of is, represents like an outer sort of witness that is, you know, kind of looking in on you and is sort of creating the sense of what are you doing? We have work to do. Like you don't, like we don't have the time or energy. We've done so much work. We can't now, like we can't now chill like Taurus and kind of look at what we have and don't have and, 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 and become attached to our possessions. We have to let everything go. Um, but you don't have to, you know, and I do also feel that this nine of wands is like, because there's Jupiter in your first house, um, and I was saying this during the solar eclipse season back in August, but, and I, because I believe that the solar eclipse, um, that was happening in Leo with the, I think it was the new moon in Leo with the solar eclipse was occurring in your 10th house. 
So there was a bright spotlight being shined on your 10th house arena. And what that means is that a lot of you have career are like making career moves, making kind of like this, these career power moves. And you have to allow them to sort of move in. You have to allow them to, you have to allow the light to be shining on you. And now that Jupiter's in your first house, it's even more kind of harsh and it's even more kind of in your face. Uh, I mean, just look at Libras, right? Like, look at what all the, these Libras just went through where everybody was kind of watching them and was like, oh my God, like Libra, like y'all, like y'all have like the winning hand, right? So what are you going to, like, what's going to happen with Libra? And now it's your turn and it's not really comfortable, right? Because Scorpio doesn't really want to be watched like that. Scorpio doesn't really want to be observed like that. Y'all kind of just want to, you know, go into your realms, go into your world and just kind of be there. And even when it comes to your work, no matter how beautiful or impressive or amazing your work is, there still is this tendency to kind of want to hold back and not really share, share it with others or only share it with those that are closest to you, right? Like there's only, only those that you really come together with on a regular basis. Do you kind of, you know, but I do see that through friendship, through sort of community and through, you know, sisterhood, brotherhood, you know, camaraderie, community, whatever it is that you're involved in, that there is this sort of, um, there's an opportunity there, right? We have the Ace of Wands, you know, beside the Three of Cups, and we have the Six of Wands beneath the Three of Cups. So I do feel that friendship and group gatherings are really going to yield some creative results and it's going to allow you to carry your creativity out like I feel like this group of friends whoever these friends are give you the confidence that you need to take your ideas right these wands and carry them off into victory right and as a result of that now we get to yield it's very slow right it's still very slow slow moving um, it's not going to happen quickly, but nonetheless, Jupiter's kind of lining some things up for you to really take place as the next year kind of unfolds. And I do see that, you know, I do see that community is really going to help you kind of get comfortable with putting your creativity out in the open. I do feel that. Um, I do feel that a lot of you are really kind of feeling yourselves right now. Good. Go for it. Do it. Love yourselves. Love your bodies you know, you love your partner, love on your partner, let your partner love on you. Um, but I do feel that whatever these opportunities are, whatever this victory card represents for you creatively is also going to kind of bring in financial benefits in the long run, right? Because it's Knight of Pentacles is very slow moving, but it's still a Knight of Pentacles, right? Like it's still a Knight that's carrying a pentacle, it's carrying financial abundance, financial wealth, material possessions. And it's just like, allow yourselves to really... Um, go with the flow of really kind of feeling all that you have materially, that it's okay, and that you can use your creativity to kind of yield more results creatively. So let's see what this temperance card is. And just a heads up, I have, you know, I think someone's going to be coming in soon to drop some stuff off. And so I may have to pause the video, but let's see what this temperance card, you have the temperance card here, Sagittarius, um, which is going to be, you know, Okay, so you have King of Cups here. Okay, so whatever this Page of Cups is, I do feel that it develops into a more sort of substantial, like this person becomes more kind of substantial and more sort of established in your life. Um, but you're taking your time, right? Because Temperance to me also represents, you know, waiting patiently, not really um, making sudden moves allowing the energy to build, right? Allowing the proper mixing, the proper synergy to occur before you actually dive in. Like, right, in order for in order for in order for everything to kind of in order for everything to kind of operate and to move forward in the exact way that it needs to and with regard to divine timing, you kind of have to balance out this these energies and this synergy. Um, but I do feel that this this page of cups becomes a more established um, a more established partner, a more established presence in your life, right? They, they grow into a king. And I do feel that it is some kind of divine, and it's in divine timing. It's in, it's in God's hands. It's in Source's hands. So you're just going to have to let it go. So one second. Okay. So with that, let's pull an outcome card for Scorpio for November 2017. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Scorpios. All my November Scorpios and October Scorpios. Like my cousin. 
Ten of Cups. That's a beautiful outcome card to get. Um, so Ten of Cups. Self-explanatory. Love is in the air. Don't mind the noise in the background. Um, I do feel that, yeah, whatever this situation is, whatever this page is to begin with, whatever these Three of Cups is to begin with, whatever this fear is around sort of putting yourself out there and letting, allowing your ideas to be kind of front and center and to be in a space where they can generate income for you. Um, as long as things stay hidden, they can't really do anything for you. Sorry um, that there's going to be abundance from all of these things. Like all of these cups, love, finances, and it makes sense because Jupiter's in your sign. So, all right, Scorpios, that is your reading, Ten of Cups outcome. I don't know how much how much more I can, like, really explain that to you all. I mean, it's just everything that you want kind of comes through. Um, so that is your reading for November 2017. If you want a personal reading with me, check out the links that I've attached below and I will see you all in, I wish the lighting would readjust itself. It's not doing it, but I will see you all in December. All right. Bye.